Former U.S. president, statesman, prolific author, these days many Americans, Democrats among them, have surprising new words to describe Jimmy Carter, words like radical and provocateur. In this exclusive Canadian television interview, Terrence McKenna sits down in New York with the now controversial Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter has been a one-man publishing industry in recent years, writing almost a book a year since leaving the White House. He always finds an enthusiastic audience. His latest has proven controversial, entitled Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid. In the book, he accuses Israel of being the major obstacle to peace in the Middle East. His strongly worded attacks on Israel have his fellow Democrats running for cover. Democratic Party Chairman Howard Dean issued a strong disclaimer. He said, while I have tremendous respect for former President Carter, I fundamentally disagree and do not support his analysis of Israel and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. On this issue, President Carter speaks for himself. The senior Democrat on Capitol Hill, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, wrote, with all due respect to former President Carter, he does not speak for the Democratic Party on Israel. Former President Jimmy Carter recently sat down in New York with me to defend his controversial views. President Carter, welcome to our program. It's nice to be with you and all the folks in Canada. <clears throat> in using the inflammatory word, apartheid, in the title of your book, you seem to be accusing Israel of imposing a racist regime of the type that we saw in South Africa. Was that your intention? Not in Israel. <clears throat> uh, you left out the first word, which is Palestine. Um, I never have implied that uh, Israel had uh, anything like apartheid inside its own country. But in the West Bank and Gaza, yes. And I also <clears throat> emphasized peace, not apartheid, as my goal. I spent almost 30 years uh, of my life with one of my major goals having bringing peace to Israel and its neighbors. And uh, there's no doubt now that in the occupied territories, a minority of Israelis is uh, choosing to have uh, land instead of peace. And in the acquisition of that land deep within Palestinian territory, they have established not only settlements, but more than 200 of them, but they connect the settlements with highways and the Palestinians are excluded from the use of many of those highways and not permitted even to cross the highways. So there is, in many ways, a much more serious deprivation of human rights among the Palestinians because of this ill-advised policy than even there was in South Africa. Democratic members of the Congressional Black Caucus have taken strong exception, as you know, to the use of the word apartheid in the title of your book. One even, I think, said that he begged you to change it. Didn't that worry you? No, it didn't. Uh, the word apartheid uh, is provocative. <clears throat> but I don't look on the word provocative as negative. Uh, the title is designed to provoke discussion, debate, uh, analysis, which is almost completely absent in my country. There's practically no debate or discussion of any subject that might bring uh, criticism on any policy of the Israeli government. And I saw this as a major obstacle to the promotion of peace. And we see Nancy mm -hmm. Pelosi leading a veritable charge away from you uh, among the, the leadership of the Democratic Party. But are, you, are, are you too radical now even for Howard Dean? <laughs> well, th they made their comments before they had a chance to read the book, even before the book was published. Uh, based on their aversion to the title. But it's a justified to describe what goes on there, the oppression of the Palestinians by the Israelis, and my preference is peace, not apart. You write that Israel is the major obstacle to peace in the Middle East now, that Palestinian suicide bombings are only in reaction to purse from Israel. Is that No, I, I deplore Palestinian suicide bombings as much or more than I do what Israel has done against Palestinians. It, it's, it's horrible on both sides and it should be uh, eliminated. But you, you, you have to look at the facts. That is, uh, take Hamas, for instance, <coughs> the, the number one uh, organization that is accused. 
Uh, there hasn't been an Israeli life lost from Palestinian terrorism, that is Hamas, since August of 2004. They imposed unilaterally a ceasefire, which they call a hudna, and even very objective media like the New York Times and, and, and the newspapers in, in uh, Israel admit that uh, Hamas has refrained from uh, suicide bombings, for instance, for the last more than, two, more than a year and a half. So I, I think that uh, any sort of atrocities that, that uh, wreak havoc or death or injury on innocent civilians is abominable and ought to be equally condemned. You write that Israel is the major obstacle to peace in, in the Middle East. Uh, you know, I, I, it's not I Israel that's a major obstacle. It's a minority of Israeli leaders who prefer to occupy Palestinian land that is the obstacle to peace. It's, it's a violation of United Nations resolutions. It's a violation of the agreements that were worked out at Camp David. It's a violation of the agreement that Israel's leaders and parliament accepted at the, at the, uh, in Oslo because of the Norwegians. It's a violation of a, of a international quartet's roadmap, all of which calls for Israel to withdraw from occupied territories. It's a violation of all those things and a violation of the majority of the will of Israeli people that is the obstacle of peace. Wouldn't it be fair to say that your book is much more critical of Israel than any, any major American opinion we've seen in a long time? Certainly it is. It's the only book that I remember <laughs> that, that is at all critical mm -hmm. of, uh, of Israel. Are you taking sides now? No, I'm, I'm, my side is to promote what I think might bring peace agreements <clears throat> that would let Israel live in peace within its international rec recognized borders and to let the Palestinians have a state alongside Israel in their recognized borders and uh, have them live at peace with one another. That's my desire. Canada is among the countries that is withholding financial support from the Hamas government. Is that a good idea at this point? It's a crime against the people of, uh, of Palestine. I was there and helped to monitor the election at this January. <clears throat> I was there a year before that when Abu Mazen, Mahmoud Abbas, was elected to replace Arafat. I was there 10 years earlier when Arafat was elected and so forth. The Carter Center was all over the West Bank. And, and the election of, of Hamas uh, last January was open, honest, fair, safe. A completely legitimate election. For Canada and others to punish the Palestinian people because they voted for the candidates of their choice, I think is literally a crime. And the detrimental impact on the Palestinian people has been horrendous, as I described uh, in my book. Uh, at the time uh, Hamas was elected, the Palestinian government had already been brought into bankruptcy as was explained to me by Mahmoud Abbas right after the election. And they went into bankruptcy, in effect, the following month. On top of that, Canada has joined in with the United States and Israel and others in depriving the Hamas people even of their own collected taxes, which are being withheld by Israel. And so uh, there is no way in Palestine now to pay policemen, firemen, school teachers, nurses, welfare workers, they can't get a, a check from their own government. So they're, in effect, performing their duties without pay. And Canada is, is um, in collusion on this ill-advised policy. And I, I hope that Canada would change its position and let it be known publicly that the Palestinian people should be given their basic human rights, which have been deprived from them since the election. I'd like to ask you your reaction.